Good morning, Glen Boyd Primary. My name is a former DAK. Everybody calls me Effie. I'm a former professional football player. I played for Scotland Women's National Team for 13 years, and I am an Olympian. Having played the beautiful game for 30 odd years, I retired in May 2019. Right now, I'm a coach. I currently reside in Miami, Florida, where I coach at a private high school, and I also coach a girls under 16 club team called Sunrise Prime. You don't need to be talented actually to be part of a team. It's all about what you love and finding your space in whatever club that you get involved in. My favourite quote is always, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. You could be talented, but no matter what, if you don't work hard, then you're never going to achieve anything. My thing is, like people ask me what was my greatest talent. I, for me, I, I look at it and thinking, there was nothing special about me. You look at Messi and you're thinking, what, he's a genius, he's incredible. But for me, when I grew up, I just worked hard. Hard work was what I did in every single moment, every single opportunity, and I took it. So if you work hard, no matter at your craft, no matter in life, good things come. So it's all about hard work and enjoying what you do, and then it'll see you far. When I think about sporting greats, and sporting my sporting idol, it actually comes out with football because I love to play sports and so I always look at the biggest names in the different sports to see like what they do for their craft. And for me, the two biggest that I admire are LeBron James who plays basketball over here in America and Serena Williams who is an absolute legend. Just the things that they've achieved in their careers, the way that they've driven their teams forward, but also the way that they've um, worked so hard at their game, at their craft, to be the best they can be. And no matter what, how old they are, their age, they keep pushing and keep pushing and they keep driving. And I love that mentality. I think for me, being a coach in my current role and having played the game, it's like the girls can look at me and think, okay, I've played that high level and I can relate to them in every sense of the way. I've been where they've been. I was a girl, young girl, starting out, playing for my high school team, playing club team. I've played at a high level, I've gone on to university, where they're trying to go right now. So I've been down that path, so I feel like I'm the, the, the best role possible to guide them through the journey as they start that. So I think they, I look at that and I take my, my responsibilities very seriously. So anytime that I can help any girl, even any athlete, any young person starting out in the game or what they want to do, where they want to pick my brains about anything, I'm obviously, I've been there, I've done that, and I'm here to pass on my experiences and help anybody anytime that they need it. When I first started out, I was really shy. So it was really hard for me to just go up into a new environment. There was a girl on my street that lived there and she literally chapped on my door and dragged me up to the up to the center and that's how I really started playing. So very grateful that she saw my talent, she saw that I wanted to play but I was too shy so she helped me onto the journey. So that's where it all started from, from just a little knock from my neighbor and the rest was history. I've had a lot of high points, more high points than, than low points. But the ones that really stick out for me is my first cap for Scotland. That's it. That was very, very special. And such an honour for me representing Scotland. So the first time that I did it was very emotional. And I come on to my 100th cap, not thinking that I would even represent Scotland or represent any national team. To do that 100 times and being recognised for that is a special milestone. That is incredible. Uh, London 2012, being part of the first ever Team GB Women's Football Olympic team. Being at home, having my, my family, my friends coming down to London to Cardiff to come watch, to come support, and being even picked for that, a very, very special and incredible for me. And lastly, anytime that I put on that Scotland jersey, I'm so proud. And to then be part of a team, to again, historically, to qualify for the first ever women's championship with Scotland for Euro 2017, that was brilliant. And uh, the way that I'm to leave to knowing that I left a legacy and I was part of uh, the Scotland national team for 13 years, I think that was incredible for me and everybody else involved in that too. So when I used to play, I used to train in the gym twice a week in strength training. 
then we would be out in the pitch for four sessions a week and then also a game uh, at the weekends as well. So we trained quite a lot. When I'm coaching my girls in high school, we train Monday to Friday and then we usually have maybe two games during the week. With my club, we train three times a week and then we usually play a game or maybe two games as well. So we train quite a bit, so maybe one or two days is when we're not training. Well, when I first started playing football, I started when I was like eight years old. But again, I started probably much younger than that, just kicking about. Um, but my first club team was like when I was nine and ten. So I joined the under 13 team, come no Cosmos, played with them for until I was 16, and then I played for the women's. Then after that, I got a scholarship to America. So I went over to Miami and I studied uh, for my business degree, combining that also with my football. As a coach, um, I've been coaching, obviously I started coaching when I was 25, also in between playing. But I've really, only when I retired in 2019 that I'm now focusing in my current role now in coaching. So hopefully I'll be able to coach for many, many years. Uh, maybe not as long as I played, but you never know. I was really inspired to get involved in sport by actually watching TV, just watching it on TV and seeing it and just something about it connecting with me. I remember I lived in England in Norwich for a couple of years and that's when I really started watching the game. I remember my dad telling me stories of him playing, but I was young so I don't really remember that, but maybe that's how it first started. But really just growing up uh, in the 80s and watching Manchester United, something about watching Sir Alex Ferguson's team just inspired me and that's how I really wanted to get involved and play football. And as you know, I support Manchester United. Not doing too well right now, but they're still my team. COVID has been very challenging. Obviously for like four months, we couldn't do any football, so I couldn't even train my girls. But we just had to stay patient and just talk and communicate because we didn't know when we'd get back. We got, when we first started to get back, we still had to follow a lot of guidelines. The biggest thing, social distancing, we couldn't be in big groups, little numbers, and there's no contact. So then as a coach, you have to think outside of the box and really train players as a group, but really individually. So you come up with different ways, you work on your craft, your dribbling and all the little things um, you don't think that you work on when you're part of a team. So as the time has gone on, maybe the last two months, the rules have been a little bit more relaxed here. We've been able to do 1v1s, 2v2s. But again, at the same time, being mindful of like the, you know, the pandemic is still around, the virus is not gone. So it's again, it's all everybody being safe, but then just try to get back to what we love and just taking it every day at a time. Definitely I've had a lot of challenges in my career and I think the biggest thing was when in 2012 at the London Olympics I tore my ACL, my meniscus and I strained my LCL. So three big ligaments in my knee and at 31 years old I was thinking I'd play one more year and then I'd walk away from the game. But as fate has it that wasn't to be. So it was the biggest, I've had injuries in my career but this was definitely the biggest challenge. And it wasn't even a physical challenge because you go through that when you have injuries. You fall, you get back up and you're back in like a few weeks. But this knowing that I was going to be away from something that I loved, my job, for nearly a year, that was really hard to take. But with the support of my family, my friends, my physio, I just worked hard every single day. Worked harder and harder, loved the game even more. So when I came back, I was even more prepared. I knew my body even more. And I was able actually to play on for seven more years and I would never have thought that that would have happened in 2012.